do here is go back, 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 back. sure we had the right mic on. All right. So, um, one thing I will need is this. And one thing I was doing before I went live is uh, adding reducer to my reducer bottle here. So, uh, yeah, what's up, Fish in the Backwoods? What's up, JP Taz? How's it going? What's up, Samuel? How's it going, everybody? Um, <clears throat> so today, we got this uh, F35 uh, picture we're going to be working on. And um, you can find both the reference picture and the stencil that we're going to be using today. You can find it uh, down below. There's a link and or on mikesbrush.com. Uh, you, you'll find it directly. I'm trying to work harder on getting the airbrush. The, the whole airbrush videos section on the website updated. There's tons of videos on there that are missing. And uh, I've been kind of slowly and, and surely adding them. And, and I haven't hit update on the page yet, but there's there's quite a few on there already. And there's a lot more to be added. Uh, that way it'll make them easy to find. So if you need to come back to this video in the future, uh, you'll be able to go to mikesbrush.com. That video will be listed. You'll be able to find it on there. Uh, for free, obviously. You, this whole design is provided to you guys for free. Um, this whole exercise and lesson and everything. Uh, <clears throat> and it's all due in part to members of the Skull Squad, like Mr. Steven Ward that just showed up in the chat there. Uh, you can see the nice skull next to his name, and he actually has a pretty cool skull because he's been a member for a while. Um, but thanks to all our members and all our viewers and, and all the supporters, uh, again, anybody who's bought a stencil off the website, uh, mikesbrush.com, it all goes towards keeping these uh, nice videos, these nice tutorials going and pushing them farther and nicer quality and all that good jazz. Alrighty, with all that being said, um, if you want to help support the channel, make sure you do get yourself a stencil or, and or consider joining the Soul Skull Squad down below. Jeez. Okay, now. With all that being said, uh, what we're doing today is we're going to be painting this F-35 jet. And let me see if I can get this guy over here so you can hear me clearly. There you go. Uh, so it's an F-35 jet, and again, the reference picture that we'll be using um, will be uh, listed down below, as well as um, the stencil image that we'll be using today. What I've done is used a little bit of spray adhesive here, like this one. You can use lots of them. There's lots of different kinds out there. I sprayed it. I printed it out on a regular print sheet of paper. I sprayed a little bit of spray adhesive on the back, which turns our paper into a nice adhesive mask. And then I laid that on a nice thick 140 pound uh, watercolor paper. I've shown it before and I can show it again if I just go get it. Ugh. Here I have two different sizes and two different brands. They're both pretty much the same. Like there's not much of a difference. Um, so here you can see I have this uh, Premier by uh, Nicole. And again, it's just 140 pound, 300 grams per meter squared, nine by 12. And these ones are just a little bit bigger, 11 by 15. 140 pounds squared, 300 grams uh, squared per meter, and uh, yeah, all that good jazz made in the USA. But this is just what you want. You want a nice thick watercolor paper to stick it on because um, it's nice to paint on. 
And then all I did was use an X-Acto knife after that to cut it out. All you guys have been here before are probably going like, why are you going over this? We know how to do it. <laughs> uh, and yeah, that's just in case you're new around here and you're not sure how I got to this point. That's what we've done so far. Uh, and that just saves us all the trouble of going all through all the prep. So, uh, it says, hey mate, I finally tried that cornbread. Oh yeah, hell yeah. James Melted, what's up Mr. Melted, how's it going? Um, I had a question, I seen you post that um, cup and it was glowing. And I was just like, is that Lumilor? Or is that just glow in the dark paint? And I was just like, oh man, if you got Lumilor, that's sick, that's sick. Uh, but yeah, that's the <laughs> Anyway guys, uh, what we're gonna start today is we're gonna start by peeling off the background. Now in this particular design, we wanna keep the background. We're not gonna just toss it out. We're gonna reuse it. We're gonna re-stick it back on here. So that's also why I have the spray adhesive handy because we are gonna use a little spray adhesive to re-stick it back on there once we're done doing our background. Now on the reference picture, which I was trying to pull up on my phone here before I got distracted. Um, there is a uh, the background is not very um, it's like not very uh, there's not much going on right so it's just kind of like a plain old plain Jane background and uh, so we want to kind of make sure we give that some maybe some clouds or maybe some streaks or anything um, you, you're free to play around with it once you peel that background off I'm trying to find a picture here. Um, I'm trying to remember which one I used. Jesus. Jesus! Uh, blah, 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 blah. I'm just looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. I always send it to myself and I forgot to send it to myself. I should probably just go send it to myself. Really? Oh, there it is. Is that it? No, that's not it. Oh, man. That was the one I was going to use and then I changed my mind. Ah, I need to go... S you know what I could do? Let's go to my own YouTube real quick. <laughs> uh, go to YouTube. Go to my channel, go on any of the videos, um, right underneath, or on the, oh yeah, on the phone you click on more, right underneath the video, and then there's an imager user learn to airbrush link, click on that, close, get the app, oh my gosh, you can't get it on your phone, are you kidding me? You kidding me? I don't want to get the app. I just want to get get to this page. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Now I understand your guys' pain. All right, you know what? You know what? I'm gonna go send it to myself real quick. You know what? Screw that link down below. I'm going to spend the rest of today after I finish this. I'm going to update the site. Go to mikesbrush.com. The image will be there in the link and everything. Be easy to download. I'm going to go send it to myself real quick. I'll be right back.
All right, I got the image. <clears throat> you know what grinds my gears? Why? Why, oh why? Do I have an internet browser on my phone? If when I try to look at something on my internet browser, it's going to ask me to install an app, my dude. I don't need an app for your stupid photo website thing. I don't want it. Keep the apps off my phone. Fuck that noise. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to load up a little bit of Thalo Blue and an airbrush here. It's like, what's the point? What's the point of having a freaking website if I gotta download the app to get to your stuff? Oh my gosh, that is that is the worst. <laughs> Glow in the dark cup. Oh, all right, cool. What's up, RC Boneyard? How's it going? All righty. Now I'm working with a little bit of a low pressure today, like probably 20 PSI, and um, in order to make sure my paint flows pretty good at 20 PSI, I'm working with heavily reduced paints, and I'm mixing up some blue right here, just some thalo blue. Um, I do have gray and black already mixed up as well. kind of haze in around the jet. Now the follow blue can go really dark and kind of really light if you just lay it in lightly like this. And I'm just doing really light strokes, going side to side, really light, low pressure, bam. Now just after I have that initial glow like that, I'm just going to go in on maybe some of these areas here. We're just going to kind of give us some, some dagger strokes going back to create some streaks. Right? Some nice fuzzy dagger strokes. I'm not trying to make them all sharp. Just some nice fuzz ones. This will give the jet some motion, make it look like it's kind of going. I'm creating those, uh, you know, what are those uh, air trails kind of called? like that. We're going to bring that fade around the front. Nothing too crazy. Just working it in nice and slow. <clears throat> then I want to bring in maybe some cloud just, just kind of, you know, like it's going through a little, little cloud tunnel or something. So again, we're just having fun with the background. Um, like I said, the background on the picture is pretty simple and plain, but you can always be creative with it and give it a little bit of flair and turn it into, it's what's really going to turn it into some artwork is you giving it your own little style your own little flair and the clouds are a great way of doing that you can just come in here and just very lightly lay in some clouds and then as you go you can progressively get a little darker keep giving it more shade more tones and eventually you end up with a nice nice sky background here. It's a nice sunny day and we're just blowing through some clouds. That we're, that's what this guy's doing in this jet. Bam. simple. We don't have to go too crazy with the background. Um, if you want to get really crazy with these clouds, you can. Sometimes it's better just leave it up to the imagination a little bit. And in a case like this, where we want the eyes to really focus on the jet, 
we just want to keep these really light. You don't want to do too much here. Um, so that when we get the jet all finished up, that'll look really good. Alrighty, so now we're going to use our stencil. We're going to give it another little spray of spray adhesive here. And we're going to stick it right back on where it was. A light, light spray, okay? I'm going to spray off to the sides a couple times. One little quick spray. Give it a little bit of air real quick. Let that adhesive set up. find where it was and pop it into place Bam. now we have our masking for all of our outside area done boom boom and this is when I start bringing up my reference because we're really going to want to work off the reference So change the display time on my phone so my um, screen doesn't keep turning off so I can keep the image up and I'll put it somewhere like right I have it right here right underneath so I can look back and using your phone I've said this many times I like printouts as well like when you have a nice print but using your phone you're able to do this you move it around and focus in on certain areas. It's really hard to do that on, uh, on like, honestly, I say really hard, but it, you can't do that on a piece of paper. You can't zoom in and like, you could do this and you could pull it closer if you need. <laughs> on a paper, you can pull it closer. On this one, you could do both, right? So anyway, right now I'm gonna just keep most of the plane up on here just so I can focus in over the whole thing and keep the whole thing kind of visible to my eye. All right. So we're going to start off um, with the gray. I do have some gray loaded in already right here. And we're probably going to alternate uh, back and forth gray and, gray and black. I also have black loaded. Um, and we're just going to go ahead and um, Trying to decide here where we should start. Where to start, Captain? Actually, you know what? Because of the way this particular design is laid up, the way the colors are actually going, I'm trying to get this, get it to stay. Come on, man. There you go. I think I might start with some black. Just so we can lay some nice hard lines in. <clears throat> and then go from there. I am going to peel off a couple sections right at once. So this main wing part, this front part right here, and then this little piece right here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take that bad boy off. We're also going to remove this this piece. Oh, one thing I also forgot to mention before I got started is that you, we're going to need a paintbrush today. So make sure you got the paintbrush handy. And we're going to peel this. You see this main section? We could do this all at once, and that's why I'm doing it all, all at the same time. It's just peeling all of this at once because it'll save us time in the long run. And we can work it all at the same time since we're going to have the color. And this particular piece, I'm just going to take it and fold it over, or rip it, I guess. That works too. We'll take this piece off right here. Bam. 
this main wing, this main rear stabilizer, I, I apologize, and then we're going to take off this, this other rear stabilizer up back here. Now most of these pieces we probably might not need again, but it might be handy to just keep them. So I always like kind of just paste them on the side, or just make sure to keep them um, on the side just in case you go back and you decide you want to cover something up. It will be available to you to just be like, oh, let me just put that back into place and you're good to go. All right, so we got those areas uncovered. Now these particular spots are pretty dark. The only one I would say is this top wing. We're going to give it some shading. All right, so we'll start here. Um, and I can see right here like a quarter of the way up of the wing, uh, almost matching to where this other angle meets. There's a shade kind of going here, right, going across. And we're going to go up like this. Now, all those little lines and all those little designs on the wing, we're going to go back and, and do that with a brush. And that's why I said you will need a brush, um, just so we could do that real quick. And so, again, with the black, I'm working it in in coats. I'm not going to try to just start and go completely dark right away. I'm going to go in coats and just work it in nice and slow. This area is really dark, so we do want it to eventually get nice and dark. And most designs you would go light to dark, or, or actually, it's always one variation or the other. It's always dark to light or light to dark. Um, and in a lot of cases, what I like to do is also do the push and pull. So you'll do dark, you'll do dark tones, then you could do light tones, then you do back again some more dark tones and then again some more light tones and you start building up these layers of tones um, just to get it all looking really good. All right, so as you can see I've just kind of followed in the shading. All we're doing and really focusing on is the main color tone and the shading for that area and uh, making sure that we get our edges in because that's the whole point of the stencil. Now this other side here it's pretty dark. right? This main cut out here yeah, we could kind of Again, you want to work it in in layers, but you can go a little darker with it. We'll let that dry. We'll hit these little spots that, again, are completely dark. And it's because of the angle of the sun. It's like the sun is back over here, so it's casting a shadow on these sides. Right, so Again, go back and do another coat over that dark area right there. Make sure your tones match up, you know, the darkest tones over here. Make sure you try to match them up to here. Then we're going to go ahead and fill in this, this spot here. Again, do it in coats. Don't get ahead of yourself. And it's all, we're just going to give ourselves a really good base and a shape of, of what we're doing. And then we're going to unmask this and we're going to start doing some nice gray and building up the shape of the plane. And again, we have our shapes uh, peeled off and, and pulled to the side. So in case we need to put them back, we can always put them back. <clears throat> and uh, this part again is pretty much, pretty much dark. I'm going to make sure to get this edge really good right here where the two darks are going to meet. And then we're going to bring that around. Alrighty, so then we'll peel off this main front part here. Just working with the black again. Peel that bad boy right off. Make sure you leave the bottom piece here at the front. We're gonna, oh wait, one, before we peel this piece, make sure you hit the bottom of this little, whatever this little piece is right here on the F35. Gotta make sure we hit that. Just like that. Then we can peel off that whole piece around. You notice I didn't really hit that top edge, but just the overspray itself will mark it. And we're gonna peel that off. We're also gonna go back here on this back wing we're going to peel off these bottom pieces of the shadow. Bam. And the 
top over here, we also have one here. Right? Now on this piece here, I'm gonna just try to fill in right in the middle, and then I'm gonna let the overspray hit that edge. I'm not gonna try to worry too much about that edge right there. peel off this top little piece right here and we'll make sure to hit the top edge this time Bam! Nothing too crazy now when it comes down to this uh, these back parts I would recommend again zooming in on your phone to make sure you can see what's going on and uh, it might help to have a straight edge um, if you're not very good with straights but I could see that there's a line coming right off of the wing here where the wing goes into the body. Like that. And there's also a nice uh, shape here as well as a nice curve in where this wing curves into the body. Um, from there, it's just a matter of matching up the shading. And hit that edge, perfect. Even though we're just working with black, again, you can shade it in, you can work it in, especially when it's reduced like this. We've reduced it a lot. It's about 50-50 paint and reducer, and we're working 20 PSI, so it's really low. Uh, what's up, Bobby Lipford? How's it going? Uh, what's up, Pedro Adrera? How's it going? And then we're going to go ahead and hit that edge there. This top piece and then just this back edge kind of want to leave that bright white there that's that's perfectly okay bam and then we're gonna focus in on the front and this is pretty much completely dark again Fill that in nice and dark. And then we'll focus on the cockpit. Peel off the second piece here. And where it goes around. So then we're going to mark off this spot and I'm just going to use a little bit of black at first. But again, you want to use your picture, your reference down here and whatever you see, you maybe we'll just throw it in there. There's a little bit of a dark there, maybe a darker edge there, kind of got the, the pilot's head kind of coming around right there or something. Kind of hard to tell, but that's kind of the point, right? Got an edge right here where it looks like the cockpit goes around. And we've got this dash kind of setting here. And there you go. Right? And it's all kind of just focusing what's on the pictures. Um, you don't want to go out, you know, out of your way to do some details that are might not be there. Um, because then you might run into some problems, right? So always draw what you see, not what you know. Uh, it can be really easy and real confusing to just be like, oh, but I know that that's there. You know, but sometimes even though you know it's there, it's not visible in the picture or it's not clear to the eye. So when you add it, it just makes it seem off, right? It's like that's not, I know that that's what it is, but that's not how it's supposed to be and that will mess with your eyes again. And then you 
see this line here? We're gonna use that line. We're gonna bring this wing. We're gonna fold it down to that line. All the way down. See that? And that line should kind of go right through where that we marked that blue thing there. All it's just a light, really light hit. the black that's all that's all you need then we're gonna put the black down for a sec and then we're gonna start working on some gray get some more gray in here What's up, Pickles of Carney? How's it going? What's up, 88 Katana? Thanks for the tips and tricks, uh, tips and bits. Right on, thank you, sir, for watching. Appreciate that. All right. So, again, now we're just going to kind of go through and make sure to hit this wing with a little bit of gray. Now, we need a straight edge. In this particular case, I'm just gonna use the wing that we cut off here in the back. And you can see that there's a nice little shadow right here at the edge. So all I'm gonna do is hit that in with the gray. Now this is heavy, heavily reduced gray, so you can work it in nice and easy. You don't have to go really thick or really heavy right away. And again, I see one on this side. And the reason I'm doing it this way and, and instructing you on these particular techniques is because you can use this to pretty much create uh, most other designs and uh, it teaches you a good way of just getting the main design down and then you can go back and add all those little details um, without too much fuss right you already have the main design in all you got to do is focus in on getting those little small things in there so we got all that in there and I believe Jeez, did I spill paint? Oh my gosh. I must have had it on my fender. Or something. Well, before I before I go peeling that off, let me just retouch that black real quick. Oh there it is. There it is. There's a secret stain. <laughs> paint man paint I swear it gets everywhere I seen somebody on Facebook shared a picture um, the other day that said I don't have paint on all my clothes and then it's like oh wait yes I do <laughs> that's totally me because it's fucking I always, all my paint has stains on it. all my all my paint has stains on it that's what I just said now all my sh all my clothes has paint stains on it all right pull off that black Make sure I don't have any any secret stains on here. Okay. All right. Now we can peel off um, pretty much the rest of the design because we do have it all pretty much marked off at this point, and there is no more folds or anything like that that needs to happen. So we can peel this bad boy right off. right here should get that off and there's another piece right in there and get that off and then there's the cockpit make sure we finish peeling that right off and this little piece 
edge can peel off the rest of the design. Make sure your edge stays nice and in there, nice and stuck down. Now, I would highly recommend, my edge is obviously just at the paper here. If you want to keep the background really nice and stuff, make sure you do finish masking that off all the way because even just a, a little bit of overspray, which I can already see we did here, um, that'll mess up your design. Again, I'm, we're just doing this for practice, but if you really want to keep it nice, uh, you know, maybe on your second or third try or whatever, you want to get a nice design, make sure you do mask off that back. So, uh, Binge watching days, kind of nice, nice, right on, welcome. Uh, what's the best way to get hold of you, Mike? Would like to have you do a portrait from a picture of my wife and dad. Um, so you could either message me on Facebook or uh, you can email me. Uh, those are both legitimate ways for a business inquiry. Uh, you have an airbrush unless you get paid on you. And yeah, exactly. That's kind of where I'm at too. It just comes with the territory. You know, so again, I'm just going to go in here. There's a nice little edge right here. Make sure to hit that edge. And I'm pretty much just going to go around. And anywhere I see an edge, this little wing that I cut off here is a good way. I'm just going to go ahead and lay that in. And I'm right-handed, so I have to hold stuff with the left hand. So I do apologize if I'm in front of the camera. I'm blocking the camera, but... Trying to get this in there. And I do see a nice little thing here. And then I see a shadow that comes right across the wing. Right like this. And we're really focusing on the shadows and the main like cutaways like this. Like I said, we are gonna come back in with a brush and all those like stripes and things on its back, those might be easier added with a brush and then just shade it over with, with an airbrush. So we're not gonna worry too much about this. I just see a nice shadow coming down right here, right towards the cockpit. There's a nice shadow that comes in just like that. Look at that. And this is why we're working with really reduced paints and low pressure. And we're just going to build up all these little shadows and tones. You don't have to lay them in really thick right away. You just, just nice and lightly. Look at that. Just work it in. guy right here. And make sure to shade in that edge. And then it looks like it goes all the way around. starting to really take shape. Gonna focus in on the front a little bit and make sure to blend out in the shadow here. And again, we're gonna do a little push and pull with the black and the gray and maybe some white at the very end. But most of this stuff is not very super defined. It's just like nice like little light shadows here. So that's all I'm doing is just getting those shadows in. Gonna 
shadow over the top of the cockpit right there. Yeah. And then I know it has a really bright white highlight there. We'll add that in at the very end again. Just make sure you take a little bit of time and you get it right where you want it. And let's not forget this back little wing, even though it's just it's pretty solidly gray, right? There ain't much going on. bit of pull with the black and then if we need we could always go back with the gray now we are working with opaques today so anything we want we could go back with the gray and we could kind of hit it back in now here on this bottom piece I do see it has like these little pointers here and then I'm going to come in and I'm going to soften in that edge right there and I do see this kind of goes in like this just reinforcing what we did with the gray and anywhere on this picture right you go in you zoom in and if you notice just a little bit darker tone you can go ahead and hit that in Bam. And as long as you're being nice and light and careful with your strokes you really should not have too much issues here this point I'm gonna take a brush just a regular paint brush I'd probably recommend like a for this I, I painted it out on a, I printed it out on an eight and a half by eleven regular print paper um, I would probably use just like a number one brush which is pretty much my go-to for most things it's just the number one brush and that same gray that we have in the container here. I'm just going to take some of that. And again, just using the picture as a reference, I see that there's some nice squiggly lines right here. And you'll notice that the gray, using a brush, the gray is a lot darker when you use a brush as opposed to using an airbrush. So just going in here, we're going to add these lines on the back here. There's another one right here. I wonder what these lines are, to be honest with you. I wonder if that's just where the plane gets put together or something. But anything I see kind of here that I could add really quick, I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Here. 
And then we've got a big, uh, looks like there's a nice little square thing right here. I, like I said, I wonder what all these things are because they don't look random. They look pretty deliberate of where they are. So I wonder if that's like the, the lines for the radio signals or, or what that is. And then we're going to come back in and do this nice little guy right here. If I'm good enough to, <laughs> yeah, no problem, hit me up. What's up, Stephen Leahy, how's it going? Uh, who are you calling a kid? I'm 56. <laughs> That's funny. Reflection radar, those lines. Oh, you see? You see? I, I was almost right. I build this F-35 scale. Nice, nice. To scale? Like a real one? That's the, What do you mean? So all I'm doing is just kind of going through wherever we see those. We're just adding them in. We kind of have some, again, another little design up here. guys hear me okay I feel like if when I'm far away from the mic like this I don't know if you could hear me uh, what good what paintbrushes are good for working on airbrush work together so look here's what I did now I'm uh, like I'm being honest right now because I'm, I'm new I in the past have not used paintbrushes for my artwork very much but because of uh, other artists I've seen use them to great effect uh, mainly Mr. Steve Leahy there that is in the chat. I, it's something I wanted to start incorporating in my work because it did seem to make uh, just a little bit of a difference getting those nice little things in there. And you're going to spend the time trying to airbrush it in there anyway. So why not make it easy on yourself just using a brush? So that's the main reason I started using brushes. But all I did, and because I don't know which brushes to get right off the bat, um, like what sizes or what I would need, now what you could do, and what I would recommend you do, and that I don't have the time to do, is sit through uh, Steve Leahy's uh, videos, and he has really informative information about brushes and, and what he uses and whatnot. I know I asked him one time that I was like, yo, I need to ask you what brushes, and then I just, I, yeah, I, I, I like, my time has been so sporadic lately that um, I just don't want to start a conversation that I don't really, like I'm not going to be able to dedicate the proper time and attention to so and I know I have a lot of videos where I say stop asking me questions that I've already answered so I don't want to be on the other side of the coin <laughs> bothering uh, Mr. Leahy with, with silly questions so what I did and to make it um, so that I learned the process as well uh, is I just went and bought this set This uh, it's called uh, Crafter's Choice at Walmart right and I went and bought like their this is their premium quality synthetic hair blah 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 Walmart set right whatever um, but the thing is that I'm learning from there what sizes of brushes that I really like and what I've been doing now is just keeping an eye out and looking around to see uh, where or how different sizes from different manufacturers um, would be the ones that I would want to want to use, right? Because not not everything that everybody makes is the same. Um, quality is a a big thing, especially nowadays. But yeah, that's kind of where I started, just so I know, 
Okay, this is the brush that I like to use, right? This is one brush. But I've realized that a, a one brush with different, you know, brush makers is completely different. Like, there are different types of brushes and stuff like that, so... I've been slowly learning and slowly diving into the world of paint brushes. But I think along with anything, just like you see me doing it now, what's going to go the longest way is just your practice and um, getting used to a brush, right? Because not every brush is going to be the same. So even though this is just a cheap Walmart brush, Um, you know, it's still possible to get good results with it. As long as you uh, have brushed up on some techniques, which is really what I use Steve videos for. I did watch how he holds the brush. I watched how he applies, you know, um, strokes and stuff like that, which is kind of what I've been paying attention to on not just Steve's videos, but a lot of uh, the pinstripe videos and stuff like that. Um... So I always recommend you watch uh, people that do a lot of their, uh, paint brushing in order to incorporate that into your work. So yeah, that's what I did. I cheaped out. I went to Walmart and bought the whole set from Walmart. Not something I recommend everybody does. But I knew that I needed to dive in and learn the basics of just regular brushes instead of trying to jump in and buy some expensive brushes and then go and mess up my brushes and then be really sad and mad that the work didn't come out the way I thought and not knowing what to do to keep them right or straight or clean or anything like that. So I knew going in that maybe the best route for me would be to just start with some regular brushes like this and then graduate into some nice brushes later on. <laughs> if that makes any sense. And I believe we've got it all. Uh, let me see here. Uh... Watercolor brushes kick ass. I use Winsor and Newton series, seven brushes, size zero, 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 and one. Yeah, that I figured. I haven't used anything bigger than a one since I started using brushes. So thank you for that, Steve. That's great information. Uh, I love the details of panel lines. Yeah, yeah. Awesome work. Thank you, Martial Artistry. How's it going? Some of those are actually ACES hatches for maintenance or, or refueling on top. Nice. Nice. I just wonder why they look like... It just looks like somebody just like spread putty. Like they're just like, oh, this weld line. We got to hide that weld line. They just spread some putty or something. I know that's probably not the way they work and they might just be some kind of sealant or something I don't know but to me the way it looks is like that anyway I'm gonna go ahead and clean up this brush real quick but yeah I've been ever since I started the pinstriping I've been for sure just looking at brushes and, and just looking at different ways that brushes are used And it's probably going to be something I'm going to be throwing into my paintings a lot more often now. I know a lot of people who are purists on the, oh, 100% airbrush. Ah, you know, and it's just like, uh, I'm more about making some badass artwork. I don't care what it takes. Uh, as opposed to being like, I have to be 100%. Because that's really not going to benefit me in the long run. Okay, so got that all taken care of. Now I'm just gonna come back with a little bit of gray. 
now that we have those lines in there, um, I do want to darken some stuff up. So one thing I noticed right away is that this wing is just more gray in the picture. All right, so now that we have those dark tones, we can really match them up. This kind of comes up right here and then goes down. And then again, doing push and pull with black. I'm going to come in with the black. I'm going to do a little bit of shading right over that gray right there. Boom. When you do the shading over those lines, it's also going to shade in those lines. So, you know, if you did the opaques like I'm doing, you don't have to worry too much. And then right here. Yeah. And then the other thing I noticed is that this, again, this wing back here is maybe just more gray, darker, right? Because right now it's like you got this bright spot which is bright in the picture, but this wing is kind of as bright as this. Right here, you see that? So we want to make sure we knock that down because that's not the way it is. Bam. Uh, maybe a little bit more back here as well on this rear rudder. that top of that wing right there. And now the gray will go over the black, so right here, maybe on this edge right here. I'm just gonna do a little bit of this. Same thing back here. Good. Good. Now, maybe, I'm thinking we need to darken this, this guy up right here. Darken him up. Hey, whatever it takes to make the client happy. Yeah, I like that mentality. That's a good one. I picked some up the other day, going to try them out when I get back from vacation. Yep, it makes total sense, yes. Uh, seriously, because then where do you draw the line? Not using projectors, not using water-based paint not using a compressor. In my day, we pumped air with our feet for airbrushing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's true though, man. I've seen so many people just like, give it up. Like, no, you can't do that. That's not real airbrushing, blah, blah, blah. And at the end of the day, it's like, man, I, I don't even care if it's airbrushing. I'm trying to do art, right? So whatever it takes to get the artwork to look where it needs to be, that's where I'm at. You know what I'm saying? I don't care if I have to use my, you know, <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> I was going to say, I don't care if I have to whip up my dick and paint it, you know, but it is. Like, if that's what's going to take it <laughs> to get some awesome artwork, uh, you know, I probably wouldn't do it on stream, but, uh, you know, you'd catch me promoting that. <laughs> just letting you know alright so at this point I, I think yeah whatever it takes to get the artwork done like I've always said before you know there are certain techniques that I show you to do like uh, or I have stencils for like the wood grain stencil for example there are ways you can do that with a brush right but that's only possible on certain things. Like you can't run a wet brush on a shirt to get a wood grain. Uh, you can't do it on, on multiple things, you know, but on a flat, you know, metal surface or something. Yeah, for sure. You could totally run some, some wet paint um, on a brush or dryish paint and different shades and you get a wood effect for sure, but that doesn't transfer over to everything. So it always has to be whatever it takes to get the artwork done. Because you can't just be like, oh, well, you know, that's just not the way it works. And it's just like, that is the way it works. <laughs> that's the way it's always worked.
<laughs> Blowing paint through a straw. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, I don't know. And you're denying yourself, you know, progress, I think, at the same time. I think that's my biggest concern. Is that things are changing, right? Yeah, for sure. Back in the day, you had those analog projectors. You had to print out every picture so you could get it. A painting of it or whatever the hell you know so you can transfer the image nowadays we have digital projectors why wouldn't you use the digital projectors beyond me because it makes it easy you save paper you don't have to keep printing you can save on ink all that good jazz that is just one example of something that I'm like yeah you should switch and I've heard multiple people go but I love my old projector and it's just like yeah I love my old projector too but you know when it's done it's done like Alright, so using that white, you see we can hit in those little super tiny little highlights as well as th these lines here. Wherever they are lighter on your picture, you can always come in. Just drop some shadows on them, boy. Just drop a little bit of shading and that will bring them right back up. It will give your shape back. Simple. Now there isn't too much that needs white highlighting. And uh, we're going to bring in a white brush here in a second. Keep talking about brushes. And you know what's funny is that I've seen people <laughs> that post, you know, oh, 100% airbrushing, blah, blah, blah. 100% freehand airbrushing. This is one that I've seen a lot. 100% freehand airbrushing. And then their whole painting will be done in this particular style. And it's just like, that, that's, that's not, I'm all for people doing freehand airbrushing, but like you can't claim something it is when it's not. And that, that does bug me. <laughs> I don't know why it, it eats at me because I know I could do those like a lot of those paintings like actually freehand and I think that's what it annoys me the most but I know the amount of work it takes and I know I just not gonna sit there and do work like that for no reason um, and uh, yeah so I'm just using the stencil to add back in our dark spots right there bam um, you could even do it with this guy right here, you know, if you need to re-emphasize this. Bam. Maybe you've got a little overspray right here, right on the bottom edge. Just hit that right back in there. No big deal. There you go. Now we're going to bring in the white brush, the brush with the white. I did that. I totally just did that. Hopefully none of y'all saw it. I totally just tried to connect the paintbrush to the airline. Alrighty, Mike. Alrighty. Cool. Cool beans, Mike. Alright, so we're just going to come in here again with our paintbrush. There's a nice little design right here. And there's an MF here, but I'm going to put for Mike's brush 
And then the year is... Twenty twenty-two, and then we'll just make it look official by doing a little dash next to it. We'll come over here. I see there's a nice little nice little rudder line here. I do see here a nice little star. Nice little highlight on that. And come over to this side. See a nice little there and there. Nothing much. We'll come right here. I do see here there's a design of sorts. Now this actually looks like a hatch because it's a different color and everything. And it definitely looks like it's something. Get the whiteness for that, and then we'll come back in with the black in a second. And get some nice little highlights right here. Go that way, that way, boom. And give this little guy one little cut. And that way, bam. Go up to the cockpit. I do see there's one line coming this way. There's some nice little highlights right there. We have our nice uh, highlight going across. And then I just see a nice little streak going like that. Right here on the front, I also see some nice little pieces here, as well as a white line of sorts coming across right there. And um, I think that's it. Oh, there's a nice little line right here. A nice little triangle. You see another little something over here. Something right here. Now, if these come out way too bright, like these, right? They're not that bright in the picture. We can come back in and just airbrush some black right over it and just throw them back a little bit. Not a big deal. Um, keep an open mind. Art is art. Yeah, you always got to just do what you need to for the artwork. Um, I wouldn't always focus on, like, oh, it's not this or it's not that. Or I had to hit my grandma with a wiffle ball bat, whatever it is. Um, you know, it's not really going to matter at the end of the day. The customer just cares that it's going to look nice. So you see that? All I do is hit those a little bit. And come back in and hit those. Just throw those a little bit in the back. Same thing with these. Just come back in and shade over them. Yeah. I still think maybe this line needs to be a little bit more darker. So just a little pushing and pulling. And that's it. I think we're pretty much good. Now the magic happens. Magic time. Oh wait, before I forget, one last thing. This thing over the top here has some black lines on it. I just wanna make sure I get those in. Uh, three little lines like this. One, two, three. And it has one line this way. One line this way. Bam. And then while we're while we have it out, we might as well go around and see any little spot you see, maybe you missed. Maybe you just want to darken it up like these right here. There you 
go. So now, time for the magic. Get in, peel it. How's it work today, babe? So much fun. So much fun, huh? Why are you laughing? Nothing, nothing. It's just like you guys in there, huh? Yeah. Like five people? Me, John, Monica, Matt. Four people. Wow. Fun. Oh, you get what I mean? I know, I was watching you. Oh, okay. There you go, guys. Pretty much it. Anyway, um, pretty much it. My wife's home from lunch, so I'm gonna go and hang out with her real quick. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Um, as always, we do appreciate all your support, so all you Skull Squad members that joined up today. We had Stephen Leahy, we had James Melton, I think we had RC Boneyard. Uh, who else? I think those are the ones that showed up today. But all you Skull Squad members, uh, we appreciate all your support. Again, if you want to see more videos like this, if you enjoy these instructionals, please consider joining down below. And or if you need to get some, yourself some nice stencils, you can always go to mikesbrush.com, get yourself some nice stencils. You'll also find the links to a lot of these videos, these how to airbrush videos. So if you're not all caught up on all of these, there is more. I am going to be updating it. There's like a lot more. I believe there's over a hundred how to airbrush videos in this particular style. So if you're interested in those, we do have them from everything from planes to sharks to skulls to octopuses to everything. So again, we do appreciate all you guys. Uh, there's Thomas Thompson in the chat. We have Abyss Mendes in the chat as well. The, all the Skull Squad members, we do appreciate all you guys. So again, if you go on the website, get yourself a stencil. It all helps the channel bring you guys more of these tutorials. We do appreciate all you guys' support. Um, I'd like to thank you guys all again for hanging out, watching today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And we'll see you guys next time. Later, later, everybody.